stand by for the time mark t minus 35 minutes and counting TC, TC, Shah 1 and 2. Go ahead. We observe both telemetry carriers are on. Copied. All stations.
स्टैंड बाई फॉर द टाइम आर टी माइनस थर्टी मिनिट्स एंड काउंटिंग नमस्कार एक बार फिर स्वागत है आप सभी दर्शकों का मैं विकास स्वर्णकार यहाँ श्रीहरिकोटा के मिशन नियंत्रण कक्ष से इस मिशन की समीक्षा प्रस्तुत करूंगा और मेरे साथ हैं इंग्लिश कमेंटेटर मिस माधुरी पी सबसे पहले आप सभी दर्शकों को हार्दिक शुभकामनाएं और बधाइयां चंद्रयान थ्री मिशन की जिसने पूर्ण सफलता के साथ 23 अगस्त 2023 को चंद्रमा की सतह पर लैंडर की सकुशल लैंडिंग की और इसके बाद रोवर ने पृथ्वी से तीन लाख अस्सी हजार किलोमीटर दूर चंद्रमा पर विचरण कर भारत की अमित छाप छोड़ दी है इसके साथ ही भारत चंद्रमा के दक्षिणी ध्रुव पर सकुशल उतरने वाला विश्व का पहला देश बन चुका है यह सब संभव हो पाया है इसरो के कुशल मार्गदर्शन और वैज्ञानिकों के अथक प्रयास से लेकिन ये तो सिर्फ शुरुआत है चंद्रमा अब इसरो इसरो तेजो में सूर्य के अध्ययन के प्रयोजन से आदित्य एलवन नामक अंतरिक्ष यान को आज 2 सितंबर 2023 को श्रीहरिकोटा के द्वितीय प्रमोचन मंच से भारतीय मानक समय के अनुसार सुबह ग्यारह बजकर पचास मिनट पर पी एस रॉकेट द्वारा प्रमोचित करेगा आइए चलें सूर्य की ओर और विज्ञान के कुछ और रहस्यों से पर्दा उठाने और वैज्ञानिक तकनीक का प्रदर्शन करने तो बने रहिए हमारे साथ आज के इस मिशन में जिसका नाम है पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन आदित्य एलवन मिशन नमस्ते व्यूअर्स द इंडियन स्पेस रिसर्च ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इज गियरिंग फॉर इट्स रोनू विद द सन टू टेक यू अलोंग ऑन द लाइव टेलीकास्ट ऑफ दिस मोमेंट इज इवन टूडे आई एम माधुरी गिविंग द कॉमेंट्री इन इंग्लिश विद मी इज माय को कॉमेंटेटर श्री विकास वर्णकार who will be giving the commentary in hindi copied we are about to script yet another chapter in the glorious space research history of india today the workhorse rocket pslv c57 will carry aditya l1 the solar observatory of india to be placed at a vantage point from where it will be able to continuously observe the sun and while being in the visibility of earth based ground stations Ten days ago, India became the first country in the world to safely land a spacecraft in the All South stations. Polar regions Stand on the moon. The I'm sure many of you were the now. eager and proud spectators of Ch the Chandrayaan-3 landing that was being telecast from this track, situated in Bangalore. Roger. We bring to you an integration film for the PSLV C-57 that took place in. सतीश धवन स्पेस सेंटर शार श्री हरिकोटा अभी आप अपने स्क्रीन पर देख रहे हैं यह है प्रथम कोर चरण एस वन थर्टी नाइन बूस्टर का नॉजल एन सेगमेंट इस प्रथम चरण के साथ ये शुरुआत होती है और यह मिडिल सेगमेंट को इसके ऊपर संयोजित किया जा रहा है ऐसे तीन मिडिल सेगमेंट इसके ऊपर संयोजित किए जाएंगे और अंत में हेड एंड सेगमेंट सबसे ऊपर की ओर संयोजित किया जाएगा और इस तरह तैयार होता है पीएसएलवी का प्रथम चरण कोर बूस्टर एस वन थर्टी नाइन इसमें वन थर्टी नाइन टन का प्रणोदक होता है और यह इग्नाइटर है जो इसे प्रज्वलित करता है इस इस मिशन पे यह है पी एस एक्सेल मिशन तो इसमें है छह स्ट्रेपॉन बूस्टर्स हर एक में 12 टन के नोदक भरे जाते हैं यह सब ठोस नोदक पर आधारित हैं यह एस आई टैंक को उठाकर इसके साथ संयोजित किया जा रहा है इंटरस्टेज आप देख रहे हैं इसमें रिट्रो मोटर्स लगे हुए हैं पृथकन के लिए और यह है द्वितीय चरण जो कि तरल नोदक पर आधारित चरण है इसमें विकास इंजन लगा हुआ है 
and here is the second stage of the PSLV rocket prepared in the subsystem preparation facility and brought to the vehicle assembly building of the second launch pad to be integrated on the first stage of the rocket. Here you can see this third stage PS3 and PS4 being moduled Roger. and placed inside the respective showed and then handled together Roger. to be moved to the vehicle assembly building. You can see the vehicle assembly building where the whole vehicle is assembled. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from the clean room of the vehicle assembly building. These are the visual sights from at the vehicle assembly building, again there is a clean room provision to safely integrate it to the rocket and then the heat shield halves are closed. Now the vehicle is fully ready to be moved to the launch pad which is about 900 meters away. This is PSLV C-57 standing majestically. Abhi, abhi, aapne dekha. PSLV C-57 का इंटीग्रेशन वीडियो यह पूरी तरह तैयार और कुछ अंतिम गतिविधियां जारी हैं अंतिम जांच जारी हैं प्रमोशन से पहले की We are bringing this telecast to you live from the Mission Control Center at Satish Dhawan Space Center, Shar, Sri Harikota. The launch will take place today, the 2nd of September 2023, at 11.50 hours in time Control from the second launch stations. pad. All stations, switch over to channel two at T the PSLV C-57 in its no Excel version will carry Aditya L1 spacecraft having a mass of 1,480 kilograms. The mission intends to place the spacecraft in 235 by 19,500 kilometers orbit with an inclination of 19.2 degrees. The total mission duration will be 3,799 seconds or 63 minutes, 19 seconds. Apart from Doodarshan, you can watch the live telecast on ISRO website, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter. Now we are on the way of promotion. We are on the way of promotion. आदित्य एल वन सूर्य का अध्ययन करने वाला पहला अंतरिक्ष आधारित भारतीय मिशन है इस मिशन से आदित्य एल वन नामक अंतरिक्ष यान को सूर्य पृथ्वी प्रणाली में लैंग्रेज वन पॉइंट के चारों ओर एक प्रभामंडल कक्षा में स्थापित किया जाएगा यह लैंग्रेज पॉइंट पृथ्वी से लगभग 15 लाख किलोमीटर दूर है इस तरह एल पर रखे गए उपग्रह को सूर्य को बिना किसी आच्छादन या ग्रहण के लगातार देखा जा सकता है यह अंतरिक्ष विद्युत चुंबकीय और कण चुंबकीय क्षेत्र सूचकांकों का उपयोग करके फोटोस्फीयर क्रोमोस्फीयर और सूर्य के सबसे बाहरी परत जिसे हम कोरोना के नाम से जानते हैं इनका निरीक्षण करने के लिए इसमें सात नित लगे हुए हैं इनमें से चार नित सीधे सूर्य की गति की का अध्ययन करेंगे तथा अन्य तीन नित L1 बिंदु पर कणों और क्षेत्रों का यथास्थिति अध्ययन करेंगे इस तरह आदित्य L1 उपग्रह के नित भार कोरोनल तापन कोरोनल मास इजेक्शन प्री फ्लेयर और फ्लेयर गतिविधियों गतिविधियों और उनकी विशेषताओं और अंतरिक्ष मौसम की गतिशीलता को समझने के लिए अत्यधिक महत्वपूर्ण जानकारी प्रदान करेंगे अब आपके सामने प्रस्तुत है आदित्य L1 वन कर्टन रेजर पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन इज प्रिपेयर टू लॉन्च दन थाउजेंड फोर हंड्रेड एंड एटी के जी आदित्य एल वन स्पेस क्राफ्ट इन टू अर्थ बाउंड ऑर्बिट फ्रॉम विच इट विल बी प्लेस इन टू अलो ऑर्बिट अराउंड दी एल वन पॉइंट इन फोर मंथ द सैटेलाइट इज इंटेंडेड टू स्टडी द सन एंड हाउ इट इम्पैक्ट द हिलोस्फियर 
the sun which is the center of our solar system and has always fascinated humans is a ball of hot gases formed by the nuclear fusion process the visible outer surface of the sun is known as the photosphere followed by the chromosphere and then the corona after initially dropping through the chromosphere the sun's temperature abruptly rises in the corona reaching extremely high values of 1 to 3 million Kelvin. The Aditya L1 mission has seven scientific payloads to conduct a comprehensive study of the sun. The Visible Emission Line Coronograph, VELC, investigates the solar corona and the dynamics of coronal mass ejections. The Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope, Suit payload scans the solar disk in near ultraviolet light and detects fluctuations in solar irradiance. The Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiment, Aspects, and Plasma Analyzer Package for Aditya, PAPA payloads investigate the solar wind and energetic ions, as well as their energy distributions. The Solar Low Energy X-ray Spectrometer, Solexis, and the high energy L1 orbiting X-ray spectrometer, Helios, analyze X-ray flares from the sun over a wide energy range. The magnetometer payload is designed to measure the interplanetary magnetic field at the L1 point. Aditya L1 is equipped to take in situ measurements of charged particles and fields at L1 and is dedicated to studying the sun across several energy bands. The Lagrange point L1 is located around 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth between the sun and the Earth. And These observations are best made from a vantage point that provides a continuous view of the sun. All payloads are designed in close coordination with ISRO centers and national laboratories like as IIA, IUCAA, and PRL. With this mission, ISRO will once again demonstrate its position in space exploration. We are 17 minutes 23 seconds from the launch time. The countdown for PSLV C 57. Aditya L1 mission has been 24 hours long. It had started yesterday. During the countdown, critical activities have been carried out on the launch vehicle and the spacecraft. The propellant have been serviced into the launch vehicle stages. The bottle storing the gases for command and control operations have been charged to pre-launch pressure levels. The onboard batteries have been charged. Now, in a little while, we'll go to the automatic launch sequence initiation for which the pre preparations are underway in the, in the launch and mission control centers. ROD to mission director. Range is ready for PSLV C 57 Aditya L1 mission. Mission director Roger. TTC director to mission director. All is, uh, TTC director confirms readiness of all his track uh, stations and network for supporting abhi, abhi, CSLV aapne C57 Aditya L1 mission. Mission director Roger. Ubhra Nideshak. TCTC. Data lover sub planet. Telemetry. Telecom on Nideshak. Tatha Yaan Nideshak ne aapne tundro ki soochna mission Nideshak ko dedi hai. Iske pas shat. T minus 16 minutes and count. Sabhi aankade santosh janak honne par. Mission director. Mission Readiness Review and Launch Authorization Board have already given clearance for proceeding with the countdown and launch of PSLV C-57 Aditya L-1 mission. All operations in the countdown sequence till automatic launch sequence have been completed satisfactorily. Based on the clearance obtained from launch vehicle, spacecraft, range and distract network stations and prevailing favorable weather conditions, Mission Director hereby authorizes to initiate launch operation sequence for the launch of PSLV C-57 Aditya L1 mission at 11.50 hours IST today, that is 2nd September 2023. All stations to note, Mission Director has given authorization for the launch of PSLV C-57 Aditya L1 mission. 
The automatic launch sequence, the initiation has been announced and hereafter a very critical capsule of performance validation for the launch vehicle systems will be carried out and very close to the launch time, control will be passed on to the onboard computers. जी हाँ ऑटोमेटिक लॉन्च सीक्वेंस चालू हो चुका है एएलएस शुरू होने के पश्चात रॉकेट स्वचालित होकर सर्वप्रथम टी माइनस पॉइंट थ्री सेकेंड्स पर आरसीटी का प्रज्वलन शुरू करेगा और टी जीरो पर कोर बूस्टर एस वन थर्टी नाइन का प्रज्वलन शुरू होगा लेकिन इस दौरान वह स्वचालित तरीके से सभी जांच जारी रखे हुए है on your tv screens honorable minister of state for science and technology and prime minister's office dr jitendra singh this mission is the 91st launch mission of isro and 59th of workhorse pslv as mentioned earlier pslv is excel version with six strap on motors alongside the core l s139 motor is being used for the present mission this is the 25th time pslv xl is getting ready for launch so far in the year 2023 isro has launched sslv's maiden successful mission two commercial missions of pslv one mission of gslv carrying the first among the second generation of navigation satellites one commercial mission of lvm3 and another mission of lvm3 again carrying the prestigious chandrayaan 3 spacecraft ps4 control system activation in progress aditya l1 jo ki ek antrikshyaan hai is mission ka isko prithvi se 235 by 19500 km ki nimna bhu kaksha mein 19.2 degree के झुकाव के साथ अंतक्षेपित किया जाएगा इस कक्षा में निर्धारित आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ पेरीजी 346.6 डिग्री को प्राप्त करने के लिए पीएसएलवी के चतुर्थ चरण को दो बार प्रज्वलित कर इसे प्राप्त किया जाएगा आर्ग्यूमेंट ऑफ पेरीजी मोड और पेरीजी के बीच के कोण हैं जिसे कक्षीय तल के साथ मापा जाता है आदित्य एल वन के इस दीर्घाकार कक्षा में अंतक्षेपण के पश्चात उचित समय पर और उचित अभिवृत्ति में अंतरिक्ष यान को अंतरिक्ष यान में लगे लिक्विड एपोजी मोटर्स को फायर कर कक्षांतरण किया जाएगा और इस तरह पांचवी बार में एल मोटर को फायर कर यान को पृथ्वी की प्रभावी क्षेत्र से बाहर निकलने में समुचित गति प्राप्त की जाएगी फिर वह पृथ्वी की कक्षा से छोड़कर सूर्य की कक्षा में प्रवेश करेगा और ऐसा करते हुए यह करीब 125 दिनों का समय लगेगा 125 दिनों बाद यह L1 पॉइंट के पास पहुंचकर और उसकी परिक्रमा करना शुरू कर देगा और यही वह L1 पॉइंट है जहां पर से यह अपने वैज्ञानिक उद्देश्यों का भी प्रतिपादन करेगा अब हम उड़ान से 11 मिनट की दूरी पर Let me in the meantime uh, tell the viewers about the flight events that uh, the launch of PSLV C57 Aditya L1 will uh, take. This mission is among the longest flights of PSLV. It is going to last for 63 minutes and 19 seconds. The lift off coincides with the ignition of core S139 solid rocket motor and the ignition of the four ground lift strap ons. While the rocket is at 2.7 kilometers altitude the two airlift strap ons also commence their operation the action time of strap on motors PSU is 70 seconds and the ground lift and airlift strap ons are separated from the ongoing launch vehicle at 70 and 92 seconds into the flight respectively 
the core s139 motor continues to thrust till 110 seconds since the second Even stage of PSLV operates on pressure-fed liquid engine, the optimal performance of the engine is ensured if the effect thrust cutoff or separation of the lower stage is countered by additional means of thrust generation. Therefore, the alleged motors provided for this purpose ignite 3 seconds before the first stage separation and continue to thr thrust for 11 seconds. The second stage, PS2, commences its operation 200 milliseconds after the separation of first stage. By this time, the rocket would have attained 55 kilometers altitude. The closed-loop guidance is initiated, which compares the present state of rocket to the intended injection point to compute an optimal trajectory. This happens while the rocket is at 59.7 kilometers altitude. At 204 seconds into the flight, the payload fairing is separated as the launch vehicle attains 113 km altitude and the dense atmosphere passing. is no longer present around. These events are taking place in the operational regime of the second stage which lasts for 153 seconds. PS2 was separated 262.4 seconds into the flight at an altitude of 130 km while the relative velocity is 4.9 km per second. The third stage, PS3, ignites about a second later and burns 418 seconds, during which time it adds 12 km to the altitude and enhances relative velocity tremendously from 4.9 km per second to 7.3 km per second. There is a coast phase of 200 seconds that follow PS3 burnout, during which there is no thrust being developed but the rocket continues to be steered. At 581 seconds into the flight, the PS3 separates and the last in the fourth stage of the rocket, together with the Aditya L1 spacecraft, coasts for a long, long time thereafter. Till 1396 seconds into flight, the tracking station sets Sharp, Port Blair, Brunei and back will be acquiring the real-time performance data of the flight. But thereafter, there is no visibility period of around 1600 seconds or 27 minutes. The fourth stage burns twice. First time for a duration of 30 seconds and second time for a duration of 472 seconds. The first burn takes place in no visibility zone and the second burn is tracked by a shipborne terminal placed in Pacific Ocean. About 200 seconds after the completion of second burn of PS4, the injection conditions for the separation of Aditya L1 are expected to be achieved. An altitude of 648.7 km and a relative velocity of 8.9 km per second, which translates into an orbit of 235 by 19,500 km. The injection event of Aditya L1 will be confirmed by tracking station at Koru. From the initial placement in low Earth orbit, Aditya L1 will undergo a series of Earth-bound orbit raising and eventually it will exit Earth's sphere of influence to reach Lagrange's point L1 in a journey spanning over four months. There it will be placed in a halo orbit around L1. This is how India's first observatory class space-based solar mission will take shape. Vehicle is in internal battery power. अब हम उड़ान से 6 मिनट की दूरी पर हैं. ALS जारी है. सभी जांच सुचारू रूप से जारी हैं. इस दौरान यहाँ उपस्थित आप देखिए यहाँ External power supplies are withdrawn. Viewers gallery pe, launch view gallery pe upasthit Jan Akrosh. Inka romanch dekhte hi banta hai. Itni mausam yahaan lagbag 37 degree ka temperature hai. Vayu gati 0.8 meter per second. In sab ke baujud yahaan upasthit huye hai is romanch ko dekhne ke liye.
एयर ट्रैफिक कंट्रोलर और मौसम विभाग की अनुमति भी प्राप्त की जा चुकी है विभिन्न ऊंचाई पर वायु गति माप ली गई है और इसे ऑन बोर्ड कंप्यूटर पर लोड कर दिया गया है The Satish Dhawan Space Center has its own meteorology department which keeps a very close watch on the weather at the launch base. Weather today is going to be dry and hot. The skies will remain clear. Ground winds will be benign and upper winds also are benign for the flight of PSLV C57 Aditya L1 mission. We are four minutes twenty three seconds to the launch. सभी वैज्ञानिक अपने कंसोल पर आंकड़े देखते हुए सभी तंत्र सामान्य निष्पादन कर रहे हैं अब हम चार मिनट की दूरी पर हैं उड़ान से T माइनस फोर मिनट एंड काउंटिंग सामान्यतः पी एस एल वी के मिशन लगभग दो हजार सेकेंड में प्राप्त कर लिए जाते हैं लेकिन यह मिशन कुछ अलग है इस मिशन में पीएसएलवी के चतुर्थ चरण यानी पीएस फोर को दो बार में प्रज्वलित कर यह उद्दिष्ट कक्षा प्राप्त की जाएगी इसका मतलब पीएसओ पीएस फोर को प्रथम पोस्टिंग फेज के बाद प्रज्वलित किया जाएगा फिर 30 सेकेंड प्रज्वलित रहकर यह बंद हो जाएगा फिर करीब सोलह सौ सेकेंड की कोस्टिंग फेज जारी रहेगी तत्पश्चात फिर से पी एस को प्रज्वलित कर चार सौ बहत्तर सेकेंड तक प्रणोद उत्पन्न किया जाएगा और फिर शांत हो जाएगा आदित्य एलवन के कक्षा की स्थिति प्राप्त होते ही उसे निर्दिष्ट कक्षा में अंतक्षेपित किया जाएगा इस तरह पूरे मिशन में लगभग अड़तीस सौ सेकेंड का समय लगेगा यह पी एस का प्रमोशन यान ट्रैकिंग के संदर्भ में भी काफ़ी जटिल है इसे ट्रैक करने के लिए शॉर्ट पोर्ट ब्लेयर ब्रूने और बैग स्थित ग्राउंड स्टेशन हमें वास्तविक समय पे यान की जानकारी उपलब्ध कराते रहेंगे लेकिन चतुर्थ चरण के प्रज्वलन के समय यान हमारे ग्राउंड स्टेशन की दृष्टि से दूर जा चुका होगा इसलिए शिप बॉन ट्रैकिंग या शिप बॉन टर्मिनल को दक्षिणी पैसेफिक महासागर में स्थित किया गया है वह हमें पी एस फोर बर्न वन और बर्न टू की जानकारी उपलब्ध कराएगा इसके बाद पी एस फोर शट ऑफ और आदित्य एल वन के अंतक्षेपण की पुष्टि कुरू फ्रेंच गयाना स्थित ग्राउंड स्टेशन से की जाएगी टी माइनस टू मिनट एंड काउंटिंग अब हम उड़ान से एक मिनट पचास सेकंड की दूरी पर यह पी एस एल वी की उनसठवीं उड़ान होगी और एस पी एस एल वी एक्सल संस्करण में यह पच्चीसवीं उड़ान है इसरो के वर्क हॉर्स कहे जाने वाले इस रॉकेट कई ऐतिहासिक मिशन को सफलतापूर्वक संपन्न किया है जिसमें चंद्रयान वन और मार्स ऑर्बिटर मिशन उल्लेखनीय है यह प्रमोशन वर्ष दो का सातवां मिशन होगा इस साल की शुरुआत में एस एस एल वी के सफल प्रमोचन से शुरुआत कर एल वी एम थ्री के दो प्रमोचन जी एस एल वी मार्क टू का एक और पी एस एल वी के दो सफल प्रमोचन हो चुके हैं यह पी एस एल वी का वर्तमान वर्ष में तीसरा मिशन है Minus 55 seconds. All stops are armed. Minus 50 seconds. All seconds are armed. तो हमारे साथ बने रहिए. अब 40 सेकंड पर. Minus 40 seconds. Promotion किया जाएगा. Minus 35 seconds. Minus 35 seconds. Minus 35 seconds. Real time programs activated. Minus 25 seconds. PS2 VSPP open. Minus 20 seconds. PS1 ignition arm is on. Minus 15 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 
सिक्स फाइव फोर थ्री टू वन जीरो प्लस फाइव सेकेंड लिफ्ट ऑफ नॉर्मल पी वन ट्रैकिंग पी थ्री ट्रैकिंग मैग्निफिसेंट लिफ्ट ऑफ ऑफ पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन विद आदित्य एल वन ऑन बोर्ड प्लस फिफ्टीन सेकेंड पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन का सफल उत्थापन और इसके साथ प्रथम भारतीय सौर अंतरिक्ष यान निकल चुका है सूर्य के तेज से विज्ञान को प्रकाश करने इसके साथ ही एक और कदम है अंतर्ग्रहीय सफर में भारत की उपस्थिति सिद्ध करने का आप देख रहे हैं पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन प्रथम चरण पूरी तरह सामान्य द रॉकेट फ्लाइंग फोर्थ फॉलोइंग नॉमिनल ट्रेजिक्ट्री एंड डेवलपिंग नॉमिनल थर्स्ट द ब्राइट फ्यूम्स अगेंस्ट क्लियर मिड डे स्काई रॉकेट लॉन्च इज मोर देन जस्ट अ साइट टू बी होल्ड द रोरिंग साउंड एंड द वाइब्रेशन दैट वी कैन फील हियर एडिंग टू दिस द थ्रिल आर जस्ट अमेजिंग ग्राउंड लिट एंड एयर लिट स्ट्रैप ऑन्स ऑपरेटिंग टूगेदर विद द फर्स्ट स्टेज एस वन थर्टी नाइन ग्राउंड लिट स्ट्रैप ऑन सेपरेटेड जैसा कि निर्धारित है ग्राउंड लेड स्ट्रप ऑन को सेपरेट कर दिया गया है और प्रथम चरण का निष्पादन सामान्य है इस घटनाक्रम में अगला एयर लेड स्ट्रप ऑन को यान से पृथक कर दिया जाएगा एयर लेड स्ट्रप ऑन सेपरेटेड जी हाँ इसकी भी पुष्टि हो गई है स्ट्रप ऑन को सफलतापूर्वक पृथक कर दिया गया है हंड्रेड सेकेंड पास द लॉन्च टाइम द ग्राउंड लेट एंड एयर लेट स्ट्रैप ऑन से S139 motor still thrusting. S139 110 second के प्रज्वलन काल के पश्चात उसे भी पृथक कर दिया गया है. Plus two minutes. द्वितीय चरण जो कि तरल नोदक पर आधारित चरण है इसका प्रज्वलन शुरू हो चुका है और वर्तमान में पूर्ण रूप से कर रहा है. The launch vehicle is at an altitude of 73 kilometers. First stage has been separated. Second stage has begun its operation, and the closed loop guidance has been initiated. According to the announcement by Range Operations Director, PS2 is developing nominal thrust. PS2, a 40 ton ke taral nodak par adhari charan hai. Isme vikas engine dwara 800 kilo newton ka prano dutpan hota hai. और इसका प्रज्वलन काल लगभग 150 सौ पचास सेकेंड का होगा शार एंड पोर्ट ब्लेस ट्रैकिंग स्टेशन प्रेजेंटली एक्वायरिंग सिग्नल फ्लाइट पाथ क्लोजली मैचिंग द प्रोडिक्शन प्लस थ्री मिनट वर्तमान में यान क्लोज लूप गाइडेंस के अंतर्गत है सेकेंड स्टेज परफॉर्मेंस नॉर्मल यान की ऊंचाई 106 किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति तीन किलोमीटर प्रति सेकेंड दिटी एडिशन इन पी एस टू रेजीम इज गोइंग टू बी फ्रॉम टू किलोमीटर्स पर सेकेंड टू फोर पॉइंट नाइन किलोमीटर्स पर सेकेंडिंग सेपरेटेड द पे लोड फेयरिंग कवरिंग द आदित्य एल वन स्पेस क्राफ्ट हैज बीन सेपरेटेड द करेंट ऑल्टीट्यूड ऑफ द लॉन्च व्हीकल इज हंड्रेड एंड एटीन किलोमीटर्स Relative velocity exceeding 3.8 kilometers per second. जी हाँ यान अब घने वातावरण से बाहर जा चुका है इसलिए उष्मा कवच की जरूरत नहीं रह जाती है और इस कारण इसे यान से पृथक कर दिया जाता है द्वितीय चरण वर्तमान में प्रणोद उत्पन्न करता हुआ और यान पूरी तरह सामान्य प्रदर्शन करता हुआ अपने अनुमानित पथ की ओर बढ़ रहा है सेकंड स्टेज सेपरेटेड, थर्ड स्टेज इग्नाइटेड। द्वितीय चरण को भी सफलतापूर्वक यान से पृथक कर दिया गया है उसके प्रज्वलन काल समाप्त होने पर नॉर्मल और तृतीय चरण जो कि ठोस नोदक पर आधारित चरण है इसे इसका प्रज्वलन शुरू हो चुका है We are close to five minutes past the launch time. Presently, 
the third stage of PSLV is operational developing nominal thrust. Plus five minutes. तृतीय चरण में सात दशमलव छह टन के ठोस नोदक का प्रयोग होता है और इसका प्रज्वलन काल एक सौ सत्रह दशमलव सात सेकेंड का होगा इस दौरान यह दो सौ चालीस किलो न्यूटन का प्रणोद उत्पन्न करेगा वर्तमान में यान की ऊंचाई एक सौ चौतीस किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति पांच दशमलव नौ छह किलोमीटर प्रति सेकेंड जैसा कि हम जानते हैं पीएसएलवी सबसे विश्वसनीय रॉकेट रहा है इसरो का वैसा ही प्रदर्शन करता हुआ एक और मिशन पीएसएलवी सी फिफ्टी सेवन का फॉर द प्रेजेंट मिशन आफ्टर पी एस थ्री कंप्लीट इट्स बर्न ड्यूरेशन कोस्ट फेज ऑफ टू हंड्रेड सेकेंड विल फॉलो in which the rocket will continue to be steered while there is no development of thrust ji ha abhi kuch hi kshanon mein ps3 ka prajalan kal samapt ho chuka hai aur coasting phase iske baad jari rahega in combined hosting for approximately 200 seconds unique to this mission the ps4 performance normal will start twice at predesignated times and duration minutes. the multiple start capability of ps4 will be utilized very aptly to achieve the argument of perigee of 346.6 degrees which is very crucial for this mission the commencement and duration of ps4 burns enable achieving this orbital parameter argument of perigee is the angle that is made by the perigee point from the ascending node at equatorial plane EOP exceeding 300 degrees is helpful in mission planning to achieve halo orbit around L1 with minimal propellant expenditure. सभी वैज्ञानिक गहनता से अध्ययन करते हुए नाकड़ों का जो कि ग्राउंड स्टेशन द्वारा प्रसारित किए जा रहे हैं वर्तमान में पी एस थ्री पी एस फोर कम्बाइंड कोस्टिंग फेज जारी है यान की ऊंचाई 170 किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति 7.32 किलोमीटर प्रति सेकेंड है Plus nine minutes. speaking a few words about the aditya l1 describing the sun indian vedas have said yesha bhagwan mani rakasha mandalasya chakravarti khechara chakrasya deepako brahmanda bhandasya asaye vachar karti bharvati charhati cha jagat this mighty jewel the light of eastern sky who generates operates and destroys the universe while the energy of sun after having filtered by the atmosphere is available for the sustenance of earth the explosive phenomena in sun and the solar flares are a cause for concern to the spacecraft and human space missions the vantage point for such observations is a place in between the sun and earth third stage separated now we have a successful 
separation event of the third stage of PSLV. It is approximately 900 seconds plus 10 minutes. निर्धारित पद का अनुकरण करता हुआ जा रहा है For another 600 more seconds or so, we will be getting tracking data from the Biax ground station. Your coasting phase लगभग 900 सेकंड का होगा इस दौरान हम आपको कुछ जानकारी देते हैं लैंग्रेंज पॉइंट से जुड़ी कुछ रोचक तथ्य भी हैं जैसे कि इस पॉइंट का नाम एक इटालियन फ्रेंच गणितज्ञ जोसेफ लुइग लैंग्रेंज के सम्मान में रखा गया था उन्होंने उन्नीस में इसे अपनी तकनीकी प्रपत्र जनरल थ्री बॉडी प्रॉब्लम में वर्णित किया है लेकिन इससे पहले भी तीन पॉइंट एल वन एल टू और एल थ्री को खोजने का श्रेय स्विस गणितज्ञ लेनार्ड आयलर को जाता है एल वन पॉइंट पर नासा ने पहले ही सोलर एंड हेलियोस्फेरिक ऑब्जर्वेटरी सोहो को पहुंचा चुका है और विश्व प्रसिद्ध जेम्स वेब टेलीस्कोप को एल टू लैंग्रेंज पॉइंट पर स्थापित किया गया है एल वन की पृथ्वी से सूर्य की दिशा में दूरी लगभग पंद्रह लाख किलोमीटर है और इसे हम एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल यूनिट में पॉइंट ओ वन एस्ट्रोनॉमिकल यूनिट कह सकते हैं यह पृथ्वी से सूरज की दूरी का केवल एक प्रतिशत है वेंटेज पॉइंट फॉर ऑब्जर्विंग सन इज अ प्लेस इन बिटवीन द सन एंड अर्थ वेयर डायरेक्ट विजिबिलिटी एग्जिस्ट टू द सन वाइल कंटिन्यूस कम्युनिकेशन लिंक एग्जिस्ट विद अर्थ दीज ऑब्जर्वेशन विल जनरेट अ फो वार्निंग अबाउट Disturbances in near Earth space environment, which could pose danger to the communication systems and spacecrafts. Various thermal and magnetic phenomena on the Sun are of extreme nature, which cannot be replicated in labs. The best way is to observe the Sun up close. The distance between the Earth and Sun is approximately 150 million kilometers. At the central region of the Sun, known as core, the temperature can reach as high as 15 million degrees Celsius. Power source for the Sun is nuclear fusion of hydrogen atoms that takes place in the core. The visible surface of Sun is relatively cool and has a temperature of about 5,500 degrees Celsius. The Aditya L1 spacecraft is planned to be placed in a halo orbit around the Lagrangian point 1 or normal. L1 of the Sun Earth system, which is about 1.5 million kilometers from Earth, roughly 1% of the distance to Sun. A halo orbit is a periodic three dimensional orbit near the Lagrange's point in the three body problem of orbital mecha mechanism. The object in this orbit stays in place by the gravity of Earth and Sun. It requires little energy for station keeping. Several probes have been placed in space to observe the Sun by various space agencies. Lagrange's point L1 is a great location for solar explorers such as Aditya L1 as it allows for an unobstructed view of the Sun that is never eclipsed by Earth. At L1, Aditya L1 will join spacecraft such as ESA NASA's Solar Heliospheric Observatory or SOHO, which has been at L1 since 1996. Langrange Point एक ऐसी जगह है अंतरिक्ष में जहां अगर कोई चीज पहुंचती है तो वह वही बनी रहती है क्योंकि Langrange Point पर दो बड़े द्रव्यमानों का गुरुत्वाकर्षण खिंचाव बराबर हो जाता है और इसमें 
एक अभिकेंद्रीय बल है के जो कि पिंड को दोनों द्रव्यमान के साथ बनाए रखता है ऐसे पांच लेग्रेंजन पॉइंट्स होते हैं पृथ्वी और सूर्य के बीच इन पॉइंट्स में अंतरिक्ष यान को भेजकर कम से कम ईंधन की खपत पर या उस स्थान पर अंतरिक्ष प्रयोगों को अध्ययन के लिए बनाए रखा जा सकता है आदित्य एलवन उपग्रह को भी ऐसे ही लैंग्रेंज पॉइंट वन पर स्थापित किया जा रहा है अंतरिक्ष यान को यहाँ तक पहुँचने में एक दिन का समय लगेगा इस लैंग्रेंजन पॉइंट्स के कुछ फायदे होते हैं जैसे हम यहाँ आदित्य एल वन के बारे में बात कर रहे हैं तो यह अंतरिक्ष यान लैंग्रेंजन पॉइंट वन के पास जाएगा और यहाँ ऐसा पॉइंट है जहाँ यह ऐसा पॉइंट है जहाँ से सूर्य को बिना किसी ग्रहण या रुकावट के निरंतर देखा जा सकेगा और अध्ययन किया जा सकेगा दूसरा फायदा यह कि विभिन्न मापन या विश्लेषणों के लिए किसी भी तरह की रुकावट या कमी नहीं आएगी वायु न होने की वजह से इसे दूर इससे दूर तक स्पष्ट देखा जा सकेगा लैंग्रेंज पॉइंट पर इस वेधशाला को रखने का मुख्य कारण यह भी है कि यहाँ उपग्रह लगभग स्थिर रहेगा और उपग्रह के अभिवृत्ति नियंत्रण के लिए अधिक ईंधन की आवश्यकता नहीं होगी वर्तमान में पी एस फोर चरण का कोस्टिंग फेज जारी है अब यान की ऊंचाई 280 किलोमीटर तथा सापेक्ष गति सात दशमलव एक आठ किलोमीटर प्रति सेकेंड है अब यह उचित अभिवृद्धि प्राप्त कर पुनः प्रज्वलित किया जाएगा व्हीकल परफॉर्मेंस नॉर्मल द आदित्य एल वन स्पेस क्राफ्ट carry seven payloads to observe the protosphere chromosphere and corona which is the outermost layer of the sun these payloads use electromagnetic particle and magnetic field detectors first among the four remote sensing set uh, payloads is visible emission line chronograph velc which is a prime payload designed as a reflective coronagraph with a multi slit spectrograph This payload is developed jointly by Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Laboratory of Electro Optical Systems, UR Rao Satellite Center, ISRO Inertial Systems Unit and Space Applications Center. The second payload is Solar Low Energy X-ray Spectrometer or SOLEX, designed to measure the solar soft X-ray flux to study solar flares. This payload is developed by ur rao satellite center third payload is the solar earth ultraviolet imaging telescope suit which is a uv telescope to image the solar disk in the near ultraviolet wavelength range the payload is developed by inter university center for astronomy and astrophysics pune leos urse and iisu The fourth payload is high energy L1 orbiting x-ray spectrometer or Helios developed by URSC is a hard x-ray normal. spectrometer designed to study solar flares in high energy x-rays. The fifth payload is the one which is meant for in situ observations. There are this is Aditya solar wind particle experiment or uh, otherwise called as aspects which comprises of spectrometers to measure low energy particles and high energy ions this payload is developed by physical research laboratory the sixth payload is plasma analyzer package for aditya in short papa it is designed to understand the solar winds and its composition and perform mass analysis of solar winds this payload is developed by vikram sarabhai space center the seventh payload is a magnetometer or mag developed by leos which will measure the low intensity interplanetary magnetic field in space using a pair of magnetic sensors जी हाँ आदित्य एलवन उपग्रह में नेतभार के बारे में जानते हुए 
इसमें सुदूर संवेदन निर्भार हैं और यथास्थिति प्रेक्षण निर्भार लगे हुए हैं सुदूर संवेदन निर्भार में सूर्य का प्रेक्षण करने के लिए वी ई एल सी कोरोना प्रतिबिंबन और वर्ण क्रम मापन के लिए है सोलर अल्ट्रा वायलेट इमेजिंग टेलीस्कोप जो कि संकीर्ण और ब्रॉडबैंड फ्रिक्वेंसी में फोटोस्फीयर और क्रोमोस्फीयर प्रतिबिंबन यह पैराबेगनी प्रतिबिंबन टेलीस्कोप है इसी क्रम में अगला है एस ओ एल एक्स सोलर लो एरे लो एनर्जी एक्स रे स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर जो कि सॉफ्ट एक्स रे वर्ण क्रम मापी है जो कि सूर्य के प्रेक्षण के लिए प्रयोग किया जाएगा इसमें एच ई एल वन ओ एक्स हाई एनर्जी एल वन ऑर्बिटिंग एक्स रे स्पेक्ट्रोमीटर है जो कि हार्ड एक्स रे वर्ण क्रम मापी है इसकी अभिकल्पना सोलर फ्लेयर के अध्ययन के लिए की गई है यथास्थिति निर्धार में आदित्य सोलर विंड पार्टिकल एक्सपेरिमेंट इसका उद्देश्य है आ, सोलर पवन सौर पवन में भारी आयंस प्रोटॉन्स और अल्फा पार्टिकल का विश्लेषण करना अगला है प्लाज्मा एनालाइजर पैकेज फॉर आदित्य यह भी सौर पवन में उपस्थित कणों में इलेक्ट्रॉन और भारी आयंस की दिशा के साथ विश्लेषण करने के लिए इसे बनाया गया है एडवांस ट्राइक्सिल हाई रिजोल्यूशन डिजिटल मैग्नोमीटर इसे त्रिअक्षीय चुंबकीय क्षेत्र के यथास्थिति मापन करने के लिए बनाया गया है और ऐसे दो समुच्चय लगे हुए हैं इस उपग्रह में यान पूरी तरह सामान्य सभी तंत्र सामान्य रूप से कार्य कर रहे हैं और यान अपनी उद्देश्य कक्षा की ओर बढ़ रहा है आदित्य एलवन के नेतभार इसरो व अन्य वैज्ञानिक संस्थानों के साथ मिलकर तैयार किए गए हैं विजुअल एमिशन लाइन क्रोनोग्राफ वीएलसी इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स बेंगलुरु द्वारा तैयार किया गया है सोलर अल्ट्रा वायलेट इमेजिंग टेलीस्कोप सूट इंटर यूनिवर्सिटी सेंटर फॉर एस्ट्रोनॉमी एंड एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स पुणे द्वारा निर्मित है सोलेक्स और हिलयॉस दोनों ही यू आर रॉ सेटेलाइट सेंटर बेंगलुरु द्वारा निर्मित किए गए हैं ए और पी स्पेस फिजिक्स लेबोरेटरी वी एस तिरुवनंतपुरम द्वारा निर्मित किए गए हैं और अंत में मैग्नेटोमीटर लेबोरेटरी फॉर इलेक्ट्रो ऑप्टिक सिस्टम्स बेंगलुरु द्वारा निर्मित किया गया है यह कोस्ट फेज जारी रहने वाला है आइए इस अंतराल में आपको लिए चलते हैं इस मिशन से जुड़ी चर्चा में जहां वरिष्ठ वैज्ञानिक हमारे प्रश्नों के उत्तर देंगे और फिर इस चर्चा के बाद हम वापस आएंगे लाइव इवेंट्स में एज वी आर इन द नो विजिबिलिटी रीजन ऑफ द फ्लाइट पाथ वी टेक यू टू द डिस्कशन रूम विदी पर्सनल कनेक्टेड विद आदित्य एल वन विल एनलाइटन मोर ऑन दिलोड एंड डिटेल्स ओवर टू डिस्कशन रूम Uh, welcome viewers after india has made history with the chandrayaan 3 moon launch it has now set its eyes on the sun uh, these scientific breakthroughs back to back are like feathers on our country's hat in fact these celestial Astro bodies are very important and are considered as sacred bodies in multiple global religions the sun is the central body of our solar system the world revolves around it and it is a source of energy for all planets including the earth today i'm joined by all the scientists who have played behind the scenes to make this project a grand success and i'm shinidhi reaching out to you from the satish dhawan space center uh, shriharikota and today we'll be discussing about the impact and the benefits of the aditya l1 space mission So today we are joined by Dr. Anil Bharatwaj, Director of PRL, Doc, Dr. Prof. Professor Anupurni Subramanian, Director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Dr. Sankar Subramanian, Principal Scientist of Aditya L1 Mission, Dr. Durgesh Tripathi, 
PI of SCYT, Dr. Dipankar Banerjee, Director of IREs, Nainital, Dr. Satish Tampi, PI of PAPA, and Dr. Vipin K. Yadav, PI of Manager, what? Magnetometer, joining us today for a 25 minute fireside chat on the sidelines of Aditya L1 launch. To start with the principal scientist and PI of Solex, Dr. Sankara Subramaniam, why is Aditya L1 mission so important and what are the objectives of this mission? Thanks a lot. I mean, first of all, let me thank uh, <coughs> ISRO as well as the uh, Government of India for providing a great opportunity for the solar and uh, heliophysics community of the country. Uh, both solar, heliophysics as well as astronomy thrives on data. Uh, more the data you have, we get more understanding about the uh, system. And Sun is our own um, um, star, our dearmost star, so understanding them is much more important for our everyday life. So this mission, Aditya, which, when it was conceived initially, uh, with, a, uh, with a support from uh, our uh, uh, Professor Yuar Rao, along with uh, Dr. Srikumar and Professor G. Srinivasan, uh, we made sure that we will have a unique data set which is not available from any other missions uh, in internationally. So the seven payloads, what was conceived for this particular mission, will provide a unique set of data which is currently not available from any other missions, which will provide us new insight into the solar and heliophysics community in India and provides some important aspects like the, uh, the initiation of the coronal mass ejections, the speed at which it gets initiated, and uh, some bay bands which are very important for the earth uh, ionospheric uh, uh, connections like uh, near ultraviolet band, and uh, the uh, high energy particles, which is uh, high energy radiations as well as, as well as particles which is coming from the solar flares and coronal mass ejections. So these are the informations uh, which would be available from this particular mission, which will allow us to understand the sun, its dynamics, as well as the inner heliosphere, which is an important element for the current day technology, as well as the space weather aspects of it. Thank you so much for your remarks, sir. So now we we'll move on to Dr. Anil Bharatwaj. So the sun is a very important energy source of life. Having understood that, it creates a trouble when it's angry. How does Aditya L1 help us through the mission? Thank you and good morning, viewers. Uh, first of all, let me tell you that uh, Aditya L1 is a multi-wavelength, multi-instrument, and multi-directional mission. Multi-wavelength because it works in X-rays, UV, and visible. Multi-instrument because there are seven experiments on board. And multi-directional because it looks not only in the sun direction but also around it. Now when we, the sun becomes angry, there are two types of process which happens. One is solar flares, that means electromagnetic radiation which reaches the earth in eight minutes. But along with that, there is a mass which is also ejected out in form of plasma and that can take about two to four days to reach the earth. What we are looking for from the Aditya Alvan mission is to see the impact of solar flares as well as coronal mass ejections as they come to the earth. We have instruments which look at not only in the sun direction, but also in other directions, for example, perpendicular to ecliptic or in the earth directions. The impact is that we need to see when the sun becomes quite angry, what are the ways in which it is affecting the planet earth and L1 point being at point L1, which is just 1% away from the earth, it is able to provide us a lot of new informations of the plasma and the electromagnetic radiations which is reaching the planet Earth. Um, thank you so much, sir. So now we'll move on to Dr. Annapurni Subramaniam. So the science behind this mission is very unique. So what's the impact of this on the Earth and also on the heliosphere? Yeah, so thank you for having me on this show. Um, to put the thing in context, uh, I'm the director of Indian Institute of Astrophysics, and we have delivered the, the, one of the major payloads on this mission. This is the visible emission line chronograph. So if you actually look at the words used in it, it is visible, because it is using, seeing the sun in the visible wavelength. Emission line, so what is it detecting? It is the emission line of certain elements. Because the corona is hot, 
the emission which you get is in the terms of uh, it's not absorbing the light which is coming from the uh, uh, sun, but it's already hot, so it is coming down by emitting lines. So we are tracking these lines using what? A coronagraph. Now, what is a coronagraph? This instrument makes a total solar eclipse all the time within the instrument. So you are looking at the sun all the time, 24-7, through using this mission, and this instrument looks at the sun as though it is always in total solar eclipse. Now, why you want to have the eclipse all the time? Because you want to see the corona. Why corona? Because when sun burps, when sun is angry, the corona is what it takes the matter away. Now, what is unique about this instrument? This is going to see the corona as close as possible from the disk of the sun. Now, what is so challenging about it? It is because the sun's corona is a million times fainter than the disk of the sun. So you have to not see the disk of the sun, but see only the corona. So this instrument is very difficult to make, challenging, but it is made, now it's going to the orbit. Now what we plan to study using this instrument is the corona, its dynamics. Through this emission line, you can actually measure the velocity by simple physics called Doppler effect. So you can measure the velocity, you can measure how much matter is moving, and eventually how that matter will come to the Earth and the helios heliosphere. So it's overall this instrument, along with the others, of course, the other PI will also be explaining about it. So these holistically will give you a lot of information regarding not only the sun, but also the heliosphere. Thank you. That was very interesting, Doctor. Thank you very much. And now we'll move on to Durgesh Tripathi, Dr. Durgesh Tripathi. You are the PI of the pay suit low, uh, for the payload suit. How is that different from other telescopes like Hubble or James Webb? And what are you going to investigate using this? Yeah, so good afternoon. My wife is going to Mumbai uh, because I'm still in the awe of the, of the launch and one of the payload is gone there. So um, essentially, uh, JWST, which is James Webb Telescope and the Hubble Telescope, they are going to look at the universe, different objects, galaxies, star formation, and, and other objects you see in the universe. Whereas uh, when we talk about it, uh, L1, it is going to look at one particular object, which is our sun. Um, and it's also uh, kept on the other side of the Sun-Earth line at the L1 point, whereas the James Webb Telescope went on the other side of the Earth, which is uh, at the L2 point. Now, uh, the scientific difference, of course, they, they also observe in ultraviolet, but uh, um, uh, Aditya, as uh, Professor Anil Bharadwaj and also Professor Anna Purnishubhana alluded to, these are multi-wavelength uh, 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 satellite, and they will be observing all across the, um, the electromagnetic spectrum. In particular, SUIT is going to be looking at the ultraviolet radiation uh, in 2,000 to 4,000 angstrom, if that matters to you, uh, um, uh, emits from the lower and the middle atmosphere of the sun. And what we want to look at that how, in general, the sun's atmosphere is coupled by looking at the observations at various height, and uh, how actually this radiation is coming and uh, getting absorbed in the uh, Earth's atmosphere and what kind of effect it can have in the chemistry of ozone and oxygen, for example, and also these explosions which are happening, how much radiation they are creating, and how much effect it would, might have. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And now we move on to Sh Dr. Satish Thampi. You are connected with the payload PAPA. Already the plasma particles on the moon are analyzed. How do you analyze plasma particles in the sun? And what is the imp importance of solar winds, and how does it impact? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving uh, opportunity to in, come into this room. Uh, as my colleagues, they mentioned actually about the sun. Today we have the auspicious day where actually we are going to our own star, that is the sun. Just I want to tell to the viewers that actually the sun, which is our hero basically in the solar system, if you look into the mass of the solar system, 99% of the mass of the solar system is occupied by sun. And also this sun is plasma. Now, when we are talking about the heliosphere, actually, with this, all our planets are engulfed in that thing. You know, we have been studying in decades, maybe in centuries, we have been studying about the sun. But what we are lacking, actually, a comprehensive approach, because sun is giving its energy mainly in three forms. The first one is the radiation, actually, my colleagues already talked about, which we can do remotely from our ground. But the plasma, basically, we are talking about the solar wind, what, what we call the space plasma, as well as the magnetic field. This can be only studied by in situ. If we study all this radiation, particles, and field, then only we'll get a full comprehensive understanding of the sun. 
Now, we are, we are getting the first space based observatory from the Indian soil, and we are making this opportunity. And of course, I am thankful to ISRO and all my colleagues and my teammates from VSSC and all my scientific colleagues here. This is the opportunity we got, actually, we are make, trying to make, understand, actually, all the three things, radiation, particles, and field. Already they mentioned about the radiation, now uh, Dr. Vivin will be talking about field. Just I want to emphasize on the particles. That's why we named it as PAPA. PAPA means Plasma Analyzer Package for Aditya. This is developed by Space Physics Laboratory in support of Vikram Sarabhai Space Center. And now this instrument has two commons. If you look at the solar wind, basically it comprises of 95% of the protons, then alpha particles roughly around 4 to 5%, then equal number of electrons also. So our PAPA is a comprehensive package measuring both ions and the electrons. Mm. Now these electrons, like already our uh, colleagues they mentioned actually the major transition events like coronal mass ejection, that's a huge mass which is coming out of sun, basically it's a plasma. Basically when you are talking about solar and basically nothing but it's an extension of the corona only, that's the atmosphere of it. Now these particles actually, they only actually modulate the energy and momentum of the planetary atmospheres. See, we, we, when the sun is quiet, like it, he is not aggressive, sun is what we are getting the ambient solar wind. So if you look into that thing actually, that one actually gives uh, what, what, what we call the, about the, uh, the interactions, what we call the normal routine phenomena which is happening on there. But when there is sun is angry, so it gives like in a CME, CAR, all these sort of events are happening, that is really going to affect our planets. That is what we call the space weather. Now our intention is to understand, that first of all actually what this effects, basically the solar wind, in the ambient condition as well as during this transient years, how this solar wind behaves, and also how this coronal mass ejections which is passing through different planets, how actually, what are the different things, like what we call about the microphysics, macrophysics, and the mesophysics of that things, that we want to understand. Mm -hmm. So one thing is actually, it's a physics subject to understand, because we are getting an ideal point, Lagrangian point, which is in the sun -earth, uh, plane, mm -hmm. and we'll be seeing the events exactly there. Second thing is actually, we can definitely monitor the parameters, like what actually Papa will measure the electrons and ions, we'll be getting energy, direction, and angular information, uh, sorry, uh, mass information. Mm. So if we know these things related to electrons, as, uh, electrons we don't want in the mass, but for the ions we are getting the mass information. Okay. Coupling the, all this information actually, what we can do is we can derive the plasma moments. Mm. That will be definitely going to the modeling part, actually dynamics part, and that will definitely going to tell about the effect of the space weather effects. Ah, yes. So in due course actually, with the L1, in addition to other L5 missions, we'll be able to tell. This is the importance of the plasma missions. Ah, yes. That actually, as, as you mentioned yes. actually earlier, with the lunar mission we achieved, we tried to understand mm. that Thing, really it changed this plasma studies changed the perspective of the moon now all they will give more uh, detail about uh, that. Yes. thank you uh, thank you sir uh, th thank you so much for that sir and now we move on to dr dipankar Banerjee. so you, you manage the beautiful solar observatory at nenital how do you think the studies of heliophysics will supplement aditya l1 can can you tell us something about the history of solar observatories in india that's right. Uh, India has a long tradition of looking at the sun from the ground. In fact, uh, from Kodaikanal Observatory, we have been observing the sun for more than 100 years. And also, we have beautiful you know, solar observatory at Udaipur, in the lakeside, and at Nainital. We are looking at the sun. But there are limitations of looking at the sun from the ground because you can only see the lower atmosphere of the sun. So this was very, very important that we could go to the space. And this is a fantastic opportunity. Originally, more than 10 years back, we were only looking at a small satellite program. And then Professor Yu Rao suddenly came up with this idea, why are we taking baby steps? We should think big. We should go to much longer distance. And then this opportunity came in, the Lagrangian one mission. The entire country, all the scientific institution got very much highly motivated. There are multiple payloads were then proposed. So eventually, now we have a Lagrangian 1 observatory class mission. And we as you heard from my colleagues, that it is a multi-wavelength observatory. So that's very important to have the shorter wavelength coverage from the space. And in addition, the ground-based observations are also important. So a combination of the ground-based telescope and the space-based platform is very, very important. And since you asked about the question about the, you know, how Aditya in the overall heliophysics uh, research uh, uh, within the international scenario, we only have three uh, an spacecraft around Lagrangian one point, from primarily from NASA and ESA. So I think, again, this is a, a fantastic achievement from India if you could reach L1. 
uh, with the full observatory class mission, it will really open a new window altogether. So I think this is a great opportunity, and we are all looking forward. And as I mentioned, probably we'll request that, you know, a better ground-based facility. We have already projected a National Large Solar Telescope project from the ground. I think this is now high time. We have a very nice uh, ground-based telescope also to complement the capabilities of Aditya L1. Thank, Thank you. you very much, sir. Indeed, it's a very great opportunity. And now we move on to Dr. V Vipin K. Yadav. So you're in charge of the magnetometer. What is the contribution of magnetometer to Aditya program? Uh, yeah, uh, you see the magnetic field measurements are very crucial uh, in, in space and especially at L1 point. Uh, what we are going to measure with magnetometer is uh, the interplanetary magnetic field that is coming all the way from sun and towards the earth. So uh, typically these values at L1 point are around five to 10 nanotesla, but these values increases whenever there is an extreme solar event, such as the coronal mass ejection or, say, a solar magnetic storms. Now, these uh, uh, events are crucial to monitor the near Earth space weather because these can have an effect on the life on Earth. Uh, if you remember Quebec, there was an event when the power lines were snapped a few years ago. That was because of an extreme solar uh, event. So to keep an eye, on the surroundings of uh, Earth, we need these measurements. And apart from that, uh, for solar wind observations also, uh, these measurements will be uh, crucial. Thank oh. you. Thank you very much, sir. So now we move on to Dr. Anuj Nandi. So uh, what is the importance of solar flares and the impact in heliospheres? And how does Aditya L1 contribute to all of this? Uh, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, as my colleagues already pointed out the importance of this mission uh, and the instruments about. So the thing is, as you know, that solar Vehicle flares are the energetic and explosive energy release wall, in few seconds to minutes time scale. And it is order of 10 to 27 arcs to 10 to 32 arcs. Now the thing is, these solar flares, uh, why it is important? As because these solar flares actually tells the dynamics and activity in the sun. So the thing is, what there are two instrument, unique instruments built by URO Satellite Center that is going to cover the solar flares from 1 kV to extremely high energy, around 200 kV. And we know that visible sun is only 6,000 degree Kelvin temperature, whereas the outer surface of the sun is million degree Kelvin. So the thing is, why there is disparity? So I think these two instruments, along with the other two instruments, VLC and SUIT, we are going to address uh, the, this million dollar questions as well as why there is difference. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And now I'd like to uh, go back to uh, Dr. Anil Bharatwaj. So uh, there are many satellites that are sent to other, uh, the, uh, the space by other nations. So what makes Aditya L1 different from these satellites? Well, that's a very good question because, uh, first of all, let me again tell you that India will be the third, or is will be the third space agency to have a mission at L1 point. And I just mentioned that it is multi-wavelength, multi-instrument, and multi-direction. And it measures particle, field, and radiations. So you don't have such kind of satellites existing at all point so far and currently. That makes Aditya L1 absolutely unique because we are going to measure remotely, in situ, and particles and fields. I was also mentioning about multi-direction, and that is coming from the aspects payload, which stands for Aditya Solar Wind Particle Experiments. And this is going to measure particles ranging from 100 EVs going to several MEVs, which is essential for us to know because when the CMEs are happening or the uh, sun is quite angry, the plasma which is coming out from the sun ranges from several EVs to several MEVs. And therefore, we should know in what direction the plasma is coming and whether the plasma is getting accelerated in between when it comes from sun towards earth. And therefore, there is a multi-direction information which is available from the aspects payload because it consists of two sensors, Swiss and STEP, essentially giving you in two different energy bands. And therefore, we'll be able to quantify the CME, CIRs, and all the processes which is happening on the sun, which gives out coral mass ejections. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, sir, for your remarks. And now, finally, we move on to the principal scientist, Dr. Sankar Subramaniam. 
So how does India, how does the Indian science community seek to capitalize on ISRO's space capabilities, especially these observatory missions like AstroStat and Aditya L1? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so now uh, ISRO has established that uh, it has a capability to uh, uh, send observatory class missions anywhere in the interplanetary medium. Um, ISRO also is developing capability for small satellite missions uh, uh, like NanoSat, uh, CubeSat, as well as the small satellite capability. And that is something which, uh, especially a heliophysics community, could utilize it because we can, at a low cost, we can launch many more such instruments which are essential for heliophysics uh, community here in India. So, That's and also the big, bigger mission takes its own uh, uh, life cycle because it requires technologies to be developed for, uh, for a bigger missions. So in between these big missions, if we capitalize on these small uh, satellite missions, and that will uh, enhance the uh, um, uh, science capability of our country to the next uh, level. And uh, as you know, the science and technologies are always synergized. As the technology improves, your science improves. Uh, when I started my career in solar physics, I started with a, a photospheric magnetic field. Now we are in a position where we can do coronal magnetic field uh, with Aditya L1, which was not feasible when I was doing my PhD. So similarly, as we move on, and as the technology starts to improve, we would be able to generate much more uh, capable instruments much more uh, compact instruments which will enable us to do much more science what, than what we can currently do. So we look forward to capitalize on ISRO's capabilities both at the large scale as well as, as, well as at the small scale uh, instruments and also its capability for developing new technologies in the near future. Uh -huh. Thank you very much, sir. That was very interesting. And uh, to, uh, to end this, I have a last question to Dr. Dipankar Banerjee. And it's about like what out uh, like what kinds of outreach is possible through this launch to energize the scientific community. This is a very very important question, and we are proud uh, to be Indian now after the Chandrayaan success. I think it's just not the students; it's the entire country is excited, and uh, and we got this opportunity to now travel towards sun. So it is very important that the younger generation you know comes into the research and also utilizes the data. You know, uh, these uh, scientific missions are for the community, and uh, it has to be the community driven. So we, some of our scientists, you know, who have been engaged with this mission for uh, decades, we understand uh, what is expected to be, uh, you know, this data. Uh, but the younger generation, they need to be trained. And uh, so for that reason, we also have a Aditya support cell at Nainital, and we are going around in the country uh, we are regularly conducting workshops. So through these workshops and training program, we really want to reach out to, to other you know, people who are particularly in the universities or IITs because they have so far not been directly involved with the Aditya mission. So I think we are really, uh, you know, really going out and we expect that the youngsters of the next generation will come and utilize this data because the data is for the community. So unless, you know, we have more users, you know, we will not be able to effectively utilize the data, scientific data which is coming and the way we can help the community at large. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I think it is very important for us also to reach out to schools and colleges because uh, the younger generation should be told about this kind of activities which is happening in the country. Chandyantri launch has galvanized the whole nation and everybody is interested to know what all is happening in the science and technology within the country. And therefore, this mission along with the Chandyantri mission, that is Adiya Telwan mission and Chandyantri mis uh, mission, is going to give us a lot of new information which is going to be very beneficial for the country. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you everybody for participating in this discussion and now we move on to the control room. Thank you Srinidhi and I thank all the panelists for enlightening us about the high tech science that Aditya L1 is about to do. Ji haan, abhi aapne suna isro ke tatha anya sansthano ke varishto vajyaniko ne हमारे बहुत महत्वपूर्ण सवालों के बहुत ही रोचक उत्तर दिए हैं इस दौरान 
चतुर्थ चरण के बर्न वन को कंफर्म किया गया है फिजी टेलीमेट्री स्थित स्टेशन से इसमें यान में होने वाले त्वरण के बदलाव को मापा जाता है और इससे पता लगाया जाता है कि यान के इंजन में शुरुआत हुई थी या नहीं और इसकी पुष्टि कर ली गई है लेकिन अभी भी यान हमारे दृष्टि से बाहर है हमारे ट्रैकिंग रेंज से बाहर है लेकिन इसकी यात्रा अभी जारी है और अब हम स्क्रीन पर देख पा रहे हैं यह पूर्वानुमानित पथ दिखाया जा रहा है यह अनुमानित पथ है ग्राउंड स्टेशन से पुष्टि होने के पश्चात यहां पर इसकी पुष्टि की जाएगी आज ग्यारह बजकर पचास मिनट पर प्रमोचित हुए पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन रॉकेट की यात्रा अभी भी जारी है प्रथम द्वितीय तथा तृतीय चरण के सामान्य कार्यकाल के पश्चात इन्हें यान से पृथक कर दिया गया था और फिर टर्मिनल टेलीमेट्री सिग्नल जी हाँ इसकी पुष्टि हो गई है शिप बॉन टर्मिनल से हमारे यान को ट्रैक कर लिया गया है अब हमारे ग्राफ को वास्तविक समय से दिखाया जा रहा है यह वास्तविक डेटा है जो अब हम देख पा रहे हैं वेलकम बैक टू द लाइव कवरेज ऑफ पी एस एल वी सी फिफ्टी सेवन आदित्य एल वन मिशन द लॉन्च टुक प्लेस एट लेवन फिफ्टी आवर्स इंडियन स्टैंडर्ड टाइम फ्रॉम द सेकेंड लॉन्च पैड एट सतीश धवन स्पेस सेंटर शार श्री हरिकोटा द फर्स्ट सेकेंड एंड थर्ड स्टेज ऑफ द लॉन्च वहीकल हैव परफॉर्म नॉर्मली एंड द लॉन्च वहीकल वॉज इन द लो नो विजिबिलिटी रेंज for the ground tracking stations ship bone terminal in pacific ocean has started to acquire signal 51 minutes into the flight ab kuch ikshano mein hum चतुर्थ चरण के पुनः प्रज्वलन को देखेंगे इन द पास ट्वेंटी सिक्स मिनट्स और सो द ग्राउंड ट्रेस फॉर द फ्लाइट वॉज बींग अपडेटेड बाई एक्सट्रोपोलेशन फोर स्टेज इंजिन स्टार्टेड फॉर बैंड टू अभी अभी रेंज ऑपरेशन डायरेक्टर ने इसकी पुष्टि की चतुर्थ चरण का प्रज्वलन शुरू हो चुका है यह पुनः प्रज्वलन है पी एस फोर का कोचिंग फेज के पश्चात यह वास्तविक समय पे हमें यहाँ आंकड़े उपलब्ध हो रहे हैं कुरू स्टेशन से वेरी है PS4 stage around 14 more minutes to go for the spacecraft injection ji ha abhi bhi lagbhag 14 minute baki hain hamare antariksh yaan l आदित्य एल वन को अंतक्षेपण के लिए आपकी जानकारी के लिए बता दें कि इस कालावधि जब अंतरिक्ष यान या हमारा यान हमारी दृष्टि से दूर हो जाता है इस कालावधि में ग्राउंड स्टेशन की दृष्टि से बाहर जा चुका होता है और यान के ऑन बोर्ड कंप्यूटर पर टेलीमेट्री स्टोरेज पर यान के महत्वपूर्ण आंकड़े सेव किए जाते हैं जब यह हमारे तय ग्राउंड स्टेशन की रेंज में आते हैं तब इन आंकड़ों का प्रसारण होता है और वहाँ से इनकी पुष्टि की जाती है कि यान इस दौरान किन गतिविधियों से गुजरा फोर 
fourth stage performance normal the fourth stage performing normally the second burn is expected to last for 472 seconds ye chaturth charan hai pslv xl rocket ka isme 2.5 ton ke nodak ka istemal ho raha hai ye taral nodak hai इसमें दो इंजन लगे होते हैं हर एक सात दशमलव तीन तीन किलो न्यूटन का प्रणोद उत्पन्न करता है इस तरह कुल प्रणो चौदह दशमलव छ किलो न्यूटन का होता है प्लस फिफ्टी फाइव मिनट्स इस प्रज्वलन काल में इसे चार चार सौ बहत्तर सेकेंड तक प्रज्वलित रखा जाएगा वरिष्ठ गणमान्य व्यक्ति यहाँ उपलब्ध उपस्थित हैं we are close to 55 minutes 30 seconds past the launch ps4 stage currently burning for the second time first stage performance normal intended trajectory closely matching the prediction presently the ship bone terminal is acquiring the signal few seconds later there will be another no visibility phase before koru uh, starts to acquire signal ji abhi द्वितीय बर्न चालू है पी एस फोर स्टेज का अभी कुछ 200 और सेकेंड जलकर यह शांत हो जाएगा सूर्य एक बड़ा और हमेशा हमेशा से एक समीप का सितारा रहा है हमारे लिए असल में यह गर्म आग का गोला है जो अनगिनत हाइड्रोजन एटम्स के फ्यूजन रिएक्शन से ऊर्जा प्राप्त करता है और इस ऊर्जा से इस सौर मंडल को एक परिवार के भांति समेटे हुए हैं पृथ्वी से सूर्य की दूरी लगभग 150 मिलियन किलोमीटर है सूर्य ही हमारे ऊर्जा स्रोत है और इस जीवन जो हम जानते हैं उसका भी स्रोत है During this non-visibility period, ground trace and flight parameters will not be updated. यान फिर से अंतर दृष्टि हो चुका है हमारे ट्रैकिंग रेंज से बाहर है. अगला ट्रैकिंग स्टेशन गुरु स्थित फ्रेंच गायना स्थित गुरु स्टेशन से हमें आंकड़े उपलब्ध होंगे कुछ ही समय में. After being injected into the space, the Aditya L1 will not travel di directly to the L1 point. Transfer maneuvers will be performed to position the spacecraft in a halo orbit. Aditya L1 will first be made to perform maneuvers in Earth orbit. Adjustments will be made in its orbital parameters. After ascertaining the normalcy of the craft, its systems, payloads, and the orbital parameters, burn to exit Earth's sphere of influence will be initiated. After exit from SOI, the cruise phase will start, and subsequently, the spacecraft will be injected into a large halo orbit around L1. The total travel time from launch to L1. Will take about four months for Aditya L1. इस दौरान आइए आपको अवगत करा दें आदित्य L1 के मुख्य उद्देश्य से 
आदित्य एलवन मिशन का मुख्य उद्देश्य है सौर गतिविधियों के विभिन्न पहलुओं में महत्वपूर्ण जानकारियां उपलब्ध कराना और इन गतिविधियों का अंतरिक्ष मौसम के असर का अध्ययन करना इस कार्य के लिए इसमें सात भार लगे हुए हैं जिनकी मदद से आदित्य एलवन फोटोस्फीयर क्रोमोस्फीयर और सूर्य के बाहरी परत के विभिन्न वेवलेंथ में परीक्षण कर सकेगा विशेष वैज्ञानिक उद्देश्य इस प्रकार हैं सूर्य के ऊपरी परत जिसे हम कोरोना के नाम से जानते हैं इसके गति की का अध्ययन करना क्रोमोस्फीयर और कोरोनल तापमान आंशिक रूप से आयनिक प्लाज्मा की भौतिकी कोरोनल मास इजेक्शन की शुरुआत और फ्लेयर्स का अध्ययन सूर्य के कण की गतिशीलता के अध्ययन के लिए आखिर प्रदान करना और यथास्थिति कण और प्लाज्मा वातावरण के परीक्षण करना प्लस वन आवर वर्तमान में आरोडी ने घोषणा की चतुर्थ चरण को बंद कर दिया गया है अब उसका थर्स्ट कट ऑफ कर दिया गया है और वह बंद हो चुका है और इसके भी पुष्टि हो चुकी है कि आदित्य एल के अंतक्षेपण की स्थितियां प्राप्त की जा चुकी हैं वी आर नाउ ईगरली अवेटिंग द इंजेक्शन ऑफ द सैटेलाइट as we have the confirmation from the range operations director that the thrust cut off for fourth stage of pslv has been achieved we are one hour into the flight कुछ ही क्षणों में क्रू स्थित ग्राउंड स्टेशन से इसकी पुष्टि की जाएगी हाईली एंटिसिपेटेड इवेंट नेक्स्ट इज द सेपरेशन इवेंट ऑफ आदित्य एल वन स्पेस यान अपने निर्धारित कक्षा की ओर कुछ क्षणों में इसकी पुष्टि होनी बाकी है यान से अंतरिक्ष यान आदित्य एल वन का सफलतापूर्ण अंतक्षेपण अभी बाकी है For Aditya L1, ISRO has developed advanced flight dynamic software to obtain past trajectory data from tracking, apply mathematical computation to calculate present and future location of the spacecraft in a process known as orbit determination. But the correct orbital parameters at the time of injection. are of prime importance ab tak kul 2200 missions ko nasa isa german nasa aditya l1 satellite separated aur jiska intezar tha wo pal aa chuka hai iski pushti kar di gayi hai aditya l1 aditya l1 mission accomplished handing over to mission director and we have a confirmation of aditya l1 separation the mission has been accomplished john yeah. has injected aditya l1 satellite into the desired intermediate orbit pslv c57 aditya l1 mission is accomplished 
आदित्य एलवन को पूर्ण परिशुद्धता से इसके निर्धारित कक्षा में स्थापित कर दिया गया है इसके बाद वह अपने आगे की सफर जारी रखेगा एल पॉइंट के लिए डू ज्वाइन एड्रेस बाय चेयरमैन इसरो सेक्रेटरी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ स्पेस श्री एस सोमनाथ सभी दर्शकों को शुभकामनाएं और बधाइयां इस मिशन की सफलता के लिए अब हम आपको लिए चलते हैं अध्यक्ष महोदय के एड्रेसिंग के लिए congratulations uh, the aditya l1 spacecraft has been injected in an elliptical orbit of 235 by 19500 km which is intended very precisely by the pslv very unique mission mode here with the upper stage of the pslv taking two burn sequence for injecting the primary satellite for the first time so i want to congratulate pslv for such a very different mission approach today to do this mission of aditya l1 to put it in in the right orbit now from now the aditya l1 will take its uh, journey after some earth maneuvers it will start its journey to the l1 point a uh, very long journey of almost 125 days so let us wish all the very best to aditya spacecraft for its long journey and being put around the hal orbit of l1 so with me the mission executives are there uh, mr biju the mission director and nigar shaji the director of the satellite project project so let them join me our honorable minister of state for science technology and space is here dr jitendra singh so i request him to speak a few words congratulations india congratulations isro and while the whole world watched this with bated breath it is indeed indeed a sunshine moment for india thank you honorable prime minister narendra modi ji for making this happen by opening up new vistas for india's space sector and telling us that sky is not the limit <laughs> thanks also honorable pm for giving us the confidence the courage and the conviction to reach out to the stars and to discover the mysteries of universe beyond and thanks also for making us realize the enormous potential of our space fraternity ladies and gentlemen indian scientists had been working toiling day and night for years and years together but now now comes the moment of vindication the moment of redeeming the pledge to the nation and coming close on the heels of successful chandrayaan 3 landing the successful launch of aditya l1 is also a testimony to the whole of science and a whole of nation approach with which we have sought to adopt in our work culture while isro is credited in executing this mission the science institutes across the country have come forward to contribute in one form or the other in small measure or big to this mission to name a few the indian institute of astrophysics bengaluru the national aerospace laboratories the tata institute of fundamental research mumbai the nijri ngri nagpur the iit khadakpur iit madras iit delhi iit mumbai and the list is too long but that having said that gives me the confidence to say that this day the 2nd of september 2023 is a day of reckoning when we move on into the next 25 years of amrit kal and mother india pledges with the collective will and collective effort 
of our 140 crore children to reach and occupy the place of pride on the world pedestal. Congratulations once again, Chairman Somanath, the entire ISRO team, and the entire countrymen. Uh, may I request uh, the project director of Adit L1, Nigar Shaji, to s say a few words. Good afternoon. It's a dream come true for uh, team Aditya L1. And I'm extremely happy that Aditya L1 is uh, injected into the intended orbit flawlessly by PSLV as always. And Aditya L1 solar panels are deployed. And the spacecraft will be normal. And Aditya L1 has started its 125 days of long journey towards L1. We have uh, our Earth burns to rise the orbit and, that, and followed by the trans L1 injection and finally insertion into the halo orbit in the sun Earth Lagrange in point L1. Once the Aditya is commissioned, it will be an asset to the heliophysis of the country and even to the global scientific fraternity. And I take this opportunity to thank Chairman Isro, uh, Director URSC, and former Director URSC, and all the Center Directors for their support and guidance for making this mission possible. And my thanks are due to my project team and all the project executives across the Center, payload teams, especially the teams from the IAA and IUCA, for the relentless effort in building the payload as well as the spacecraft. And my, speci my special thanks to the expert committee who have been guiding all through the entire project life cycle. And I thank all the industrial partners and the entire URSC team for uh, their invaluable contribution. And I feel really honored and privileged to be part of this mission. And at this juncture, I like to remember, I would like to remember Professor U.R. Rao who sowed the seed for this uh, mission and looking forward for a successful halo orbit in session and for the science, great science output from the Aditya L1 mission. Thank you, thank you all. Uh, Sri Biju, the mission director and the project director of PSLV. Good afternoon to all. My big salute to all of you for achieving this wonderful mission of Aditya. We have injected Aditya in its intermediate orbit, PSLV in its uh, 59th mission has successfully accomplished uh, injecting Aditya L1 in its intermediate orbit. It's all because of the dedicated effort of all of you. Uh, the challenging requirements given by satellite team was in need very, um, um, in, in, in it, it was very challenging to meet the orbital requirements. We have given, gone for a new mission design strategy. We have gone through an, numerous simulations to validate this, and that is the proof that you are having now. I take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you for achieving this wonderful mission. I take this opportunity to thank all my review forums, chairman and members of all review forums, and our industry partners for giving high reliable systems to, uh, for PSLV and all our family members. With this, our capability of PSLV has increased manifold to uh, venture into new missions, to new and challenging missions. I take this opportunity to thank my project team led by our Sri MJ Lal as well as uh, uh, Damodaran, Vehicle Director and Associate Vehicle Director in leading the entire campaign. I wish our um, satellite team an excellent, excellent time ahead for completing all the operations and completing all scientific objects, uh, objectives they have envisaged. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody, for spending your time watching this mission uh, and also supporting us and congratulating us, and we joined the entire country. Uh, we are very proud of the fact that we could do this mission, uh, Aditya L1 mission, just following the Chandrayaan-3 uh, activities, and, uh, and all of you are aware that the lander and the rover are still functioning, and our team is uh, with the scientific instruments doing a lot of work now. And the uh, good news is that the rover has moved almost 100 meters from uh, the lander, and uh, we are going to start the process of uh, making the both of them sleep in the coming one or two days because uh, it has to withstand the night. So until we see, hear about them later, so I would like to say big thanks to each one of you for the support and encouragement and blessings that you are giving to us for continuing the work uh, of uh, building 
the very strong space infrastructure and capability for India, and which will be becoming the one of the strong pillars of science and technology for this nation. And thank you so much for once for the contributions once again, and wish you all the best for meeting you until for next mission from Sadhisavan Space Center. Thank you. contribution from across the center, this could be done. So let me start with the director VSSC. Good afternoon, India. So this is the 59th mission of uh, PSLV. And uh, 1993 was the first mission. So this is the 30th year of PSLV. So it's, uh, PSLV is on the threshold of Shashti Purti. With the next launch, it will be crossing, it will be making 60th launch. I wish all the very best to the satellite team, all payload specialists for the operation of the uh, payloads and satellite in coming, year, uh, coming days. And uh, I uh, take this 